Another massive weekend preview, and this time we brought the big guns. Jimmy Connors in the house, Heath Pierce is in the house, James Benj is in the house as we discuss Chelsea against Man City, Manchester United against Aston Villa. We got games all over, including La Liga. What will the fate be of Ronald Koeman and Barcelona as they face Levante, Real Madrid, and Villarreal, Serie A, Lazio against Roma, Maurizio Sarri, and Josie Mourinho. We got this and so much more. Weekend preview begins right now. Everybody, welcome to Weekend Preview, a massive weekend preview. If you're listening to this on audio, thank you so much. Please keep on giving us those great reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. And if you're watching this on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash que golazo. Subscribe and press that notification bell so you'll get all the episodes. We got three today, three stars. Jimmy Conrad, Heath Beers, James Bench. Let's begin with Jimmy Conrad. Jimmy C, how are you, bud? I'm doing great. Thanks for coming to me first. I feel honored. Suck it, James and Heath. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess who I'm going to go next to? Let's go with Heath Pierce, because I know James's voice is still has to warm up. Heath Pierce, how are you, bud? Less good than when you come to me first, because this is <laughs> we know about feeding Jimmy's ego. And when you start when you do anything first with Jimmy, it feeds his ego. But otherwise, I'm great. Thank you. Oh, good to see you, HP. And listen, it's only because I just realized that Jimmy is going to be in New York City uh, later on this year. And I'm so excited because I'm going to meet Jimmy face to face for the first time ever, which is kind of amazing. I'm very, we'll talk about that later on. But James Bench, his voice is a little sensitive today because he was at Stanford Bridge uh, as Chelsea luckily uh, went through against us. James, how are you, bud? Yeah, I'm great. Um, I was saying to you guys off air, I've had my first experience of having a cough that isn't Uh COVID and spending my life going around going, I'm just coughing. It's not COVID. <laughs> I have a wedding this weekend. Um, I'm terrified. Oh, congratulations. Uh, not mine. No, oh, one, no one's oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, be singing, you'll be singing at this one as well? Or is that how you lost your voice? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, just anything to not have to watch the Derby, really. Yeah, uh, well, exactly. Well, you know, there you go, James Bench. Good luck with that wedding. Hopefully the cough improves. Again, it's not COVID, everybody. So please uh, relax. All right, let's begin, everybody. Weekend preview. We said it's a big one. When isn't it a big one? That's why we brought the big guns. But let's begin, as we always do, in the Premier League. And here we are, Chelsea against Manchester City. The repeat of the Champions League final. The Premier League champion against the Champions League winner. It's at Stamford Bridge. Thomas Tuchel against Pep Guardiola. Another massive test for both. Perhaps more for Pep. We will see what the boys think. But let's begin with you, Jimmy Conrad. Uh, It's the repeat of the Champions League final, uh, a tight affair. Everybody likes to call it a chess match. What do you see? Okay. So obviously we've talked about it ad nauseum, or at least I have anytime I have the opportunity about Pep Guardiola's tactics in the Champions League final, where he didn't actually start a proper holding midfielder. He put Gundo on there, hoping it would work out. It didn't work out. They lost 1-0 to Chelsea, as we all know. So now I'm thinking that Pep's going to overthink what he overthought before when he was thinking before and just too much overthinking. And at this point, he might have his hand forced because Rodri, it looks like he might be out. Stones and Laporte might be out. Zinchenko might be out. So it'll be interesting to see what lineup he rolls out for this particular game. Now, Thomas Tuchel has beaten him all three times. They faced each other uh, between Chelsea and Man City. So Tuchel does have the advantage. However, I do want to remind everybody that at the Etihad last year, Sterling scored right before halftime, and Aguero had that famous Panenka that got saved. The penalty got saved. It would have made it 2-0 at halftime, and I actually feel like City would have won, won that game if it had gone on to 2-0. And then uh, Marcus Alonso scored in the 91st minute to steal all the points. Uh, that made it 2-1. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out. This is going to be a great game. A chess match is probably the best way to say it, but I feel like because Chelsea have yet to lose this season. I'm giving them the slight edge. I'm going with the slight edge as well to to, to Chelsea. I think uh, Jimmy said it well. The, the overthinking is... And, and I accuse uh, Tuchel of overthinking at times. Tinkering, mm-hmm. I guess, would be more... I think uh, Pep overthinks and, and Tuchel, tink, uh, Tuchel tinkers. Uh, <laughs> you guys like that saying? I do. What an alliteration. I, I just need James Bench to say that before he starts speaking to warm up the <laughs> voice a little me. bit. Just a little bit of this uh, rhythmic yeah, uh, speaking. But yeah, I, I think that tinkering is a little bit different <laughs> because you're you're getting something, whereas I think Pep Guardiola overthinks these things. The, the thing I'd say about Manchester City in a situation like this is the need to be clinical. Obviously, they're not creating a lot. of They didn't create a lot of chances last week, and I think it was one on frame. Uh, against Chelsea, it might not be different. Chelsea's going to dictate where 
the they'll want Manchester City to play. Manchester City will likely keep good amounts of possession. But it's just about that one chance, those two chances of being clinical. And I think that can open things up against this Chelsea side. If they don't, it'll be a long day. And I think uh, Pep Guardiola will continue to feel like this guy, this manager has got me in his back pocket. He's overthinking this on me. He's smarter than me. He's a step ahead. And I think that will frustrate him more and continue to, to sell the argument on, on them missing uh, a true number nine that can just change the dynamic of a team, especially in a match like this. Well, I mean, I think that, that Guardiola is going to be most concerned about how good the atmosphere is at Stamford Bridge. You know, obviously, as, as Luis mentioned, I was there last night and it was absolutely buzzing. Sounds like it was a far cry from the Etihad when they're, they're running <laughs> in the goals. I think there's a sort of real, there's a swagger about Chelsea that even sometimes when they've been champions before, they don't have. I think, you know, and I, we all know I agree with them on this. I think they think they're the best team in Europe. I think their fans think they are. I think mm-hmm. Tuchel... As much as he would never say it, I think he probably thinks that they are. And I think that makes it that that they are therefore so much more comfortable executing their plan. And I think that, you know, that however he varies it, and it was interesting, he kind of flipped between, he's flipped between like a 3-5-2 and a 3-4-3 in the last few games. However he kind of goes about executing it, it, it's still fundamentally the same basic template. And I think that's maybe the difference with Guardiola, where he can blow up the whole approach for for one specific game you know it is we defend narrow we keep those five and 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 force people to go down the the furthest width of the uh the flanks and then we attack wide and it it works incredibly effectively and i think it's that you know they are a hard nut for a team like city to crack because they'll invite you to cross the ball into the box from you know from deep and i don't know who wins those headers for city from uh from open play so i mean i'm with you guys i i can't believe looking at the odds there that if I can read American odds correctly, that Chelsea aren't favourites and quite strong favourites. I think they're a long way ahead of of um, um, City right now, to be honest. City just yeah, no, look like a work in progress. That's a good segue into into the betting side of things. Uh, I think really what to look at is the under two and a half goals. Anytime Chelsea do seem to play against the bigger teams outside of Tottenham, I can't throw Tottenham into it right now, given their form post international break. So, so usually everything is is below under two and a half goals. We see it in the Champions League as well when they play. Everything just gets a little bit tighter, and I think they could just kind of find those fine margins to get the result. That said, because both teams really need this, I think this is a statement game. Because if Chelsea really want to go on to win the league, this is what they have to do. They have to beat Man City at home to really put their flag in the ground. Because it means it's so much, probably a draw plus two thirty is good value as well. But it's going to be really tough to James's point to find plus 170 for Chelsea at any point during this season and for them to be somewhat the second favorites in this. So I'm kind of leaning towards that Chelsea bet in some capacity. Some things to keep in mind, though, obviously look at the starting lineup because Reese James and and Golo Kante both started midweek. Are they going to start again? I mean, I feel like there's got to be some rotation because there's so many games before this next international break shows up. But the team, and I'm biased, I love N'Golo Kante. I feel like they play better when he's in the starting lineup. Now, with regard to City, I already mentioned a bunch of players that are potentially missing, but their schedule is ridiculous right now. So they got away to Chelsea, then midweek away to Paris, PSG in the Champions League, and then away to Liverpool. So I feel like there's got to be some significant rotation with regard to what Man City's going to do. Kevin De Bruyne and Phil Foden both started midweek in the League Cup and played all 90 minutes. I thought they were going to have limited minutes in that one to kind of save them for this weekend. So I don't really know, but I would really look at those starting lineups before you you want to lay down any wagers. All right. Well, that's uh, some good tips there from uh, Jimmy Conrad. He, let's get very quick uh, around the table of score predictions here. I agree. I think it's going to be very tight, but I'm going to give you mine first straight away. I think Chelsea's going to take this. Uh, Lukaku gives him a plan B. Guardiola doesn't get out of plan A as of late. Heath Pierce, give me your score prediction. Yeah, I'm going to go with 1-0 uh, for Chelsea. And just this uh, continued theme of uh, Pep Guardiola realizing how far it is to get to a Champions League final every single year. And when you miss out on a Kane, you miss out on a Ronaldo. The exhaustion, I think, is all coming to a fruition in a very tough period. And we may see some poor results come from that. Yeah, I, I, I'll i jump in really quick and say 1-0 as well. I like that value. Maybe even 2-0 to Chelsea. Maybe they get one late like they did the last time they played at the Etihad. Uh, given what I saw last weekend in the league against Southampton, where they, I think they got one shot on goal. I feel like Chelsea are just a little bit better defensively than Southampton. So, uh, I'll, I think that they'll get the clean sheet for sure. Yeah. Same for me. I thought two nil, I think it will be quite a comfortable day for Chelsea considering. Well, and you know what that means? Uh, Man City is going to win. Uh, three. <laughs> Let us stick. In the Premier League, of course, because there's another, I mean, there's another big, big game. Uh, to uh, folks in here specifically interested, the North London Derby as Arsenal face 
Tottenham. By the way, aside from this weekend preview, make sure that you check out James Bench and Jack Pitt Brook from The Athletic as they talk about the North London Derby. It's going to be a great one. That's on YouTube, by the way. So make sure that you check it out. And let's begin with you, James Bench, on the North London Derby. How do you see this one as we look ahead to the game on Sunday, right? Sunday, it's, it's going to be it. Like it's a bit of a lazy cliche to say that the form book goes out of the window in a North London derby, but like everything goes out the window in the North London derby. The TV goes out the window. Um, it's the, the children go out the window. Every, the hotel, hotel room is stripped bare. And the, you know, there in, in the chaos is the North London derby. It is the stupidest game in premier league football. It is a game. I will not, you will ask me to predict and I won't because it is dumb. <laughs> it is the sort of game where, Thomas Partey just walks off the pitch. Right. As, uh, you know, one of the smartest defensive midfielders in the world. But when you put him in the North London derby, he sees Tottenham counterattacking and goes, oh, I've got a bit of an injury. I'm just going to walk <laughs> off here. And the kind of <laughs> has to push him back on. And that, I was like, well, oh, that's quite a boring North London derby. You know, I mean, the other game last season, Arsenal were a man up uh, and a goal up and somehow turned it into like, you know, the uh, some siege where they were having to defend, you know, themselves. It was... It's a stupid game. That's all I can really say about it. I, I hate it. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm an Arsenal fan. I can't stand watching it. Um, but you kind of also have to say that Arsenal have got good form. So Tottenham will probably win. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I, I mean, I, I agree that I've been to a couple of these North London uh, derbies and they're always so exciting to me in my memory. And then the, the current versions of them now are a little bit underwhelming. They're chaotic. Uh, I, so if that's the kind of like uh, fetish you have, uh, chaos, then then this is probably the, the match for you. But, but the North I, London derbies you go to, Heath, uh, you're sitting next to Thierry Henry, and uh, yeah, I get, I get, I get, a, I get a, I, I, shrimp. Uh, I, as, uh, <laughs> I will, I will say that at a certain point of that game, when the fans were turning around singing to uh, our suite, I had a little bit of a different experience than probably the average person at North London derby. <laughs> However, uh, this one. This one is, is uh, and I and I think I'm getting the, this right that the Spurs XG on on goals scored is is second to worst in the league, and then on the Arsenal side, goals uh, conceded or goals against is second worst to Newcastle in the league, and and Spurs were were only uh, in front of Norwich, which you know take it for what you want on the statistical side. I don't I I don't know what to 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 even how to how to turn that into actionable information other than I wouldn't even believe any of that uh, going into this game because there's just so much. Um, there's just so much that plays into these and, and yeah, I I'm with James Minge on this. Like, I don't know how much to say or what to say or what's what not to say on this other than the fact that it'll be stressful. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, sun is good and, and, uh, Harry Kane is not, and you know, they counterattack well and, you know, Arsenal figure something out because Arteta's leash is getting shorter. Well, let's talk to the neutral here for a second, because I know that Jimmy and I will enjoy it for sure, especially if it's uh, an entertaining game. Let's talk about your thoughts, uh, Jimmy, but also how damaging would defeat be to Mikel Arteta? For Arteta, I think it would be very damaging. From Nuno Espirito Santo's perspective, not as damaging, especially because I feel like both of these teams are in different form coming out of the international break. Now, before Arsenal, before that break, Arsenal scored zero goals and had 13 against and, and since then, they've got five goals, four and zero against with three straight wins in all competitions. So they clearly did something right. And obviously getting back Ben White and, and Gabriel, getting him healthy and, and, and adding Tomiyasu at the right back position has been superb. Hopefully Tierney's healthy this week. So that'll really solidify their back line. Ramsdale's now in over Burton Leno. So I feel like what happened with Arteta, and I'll just say this very quickly. Before the international break, it felt like he had to play the guys that he had. And now he's actually got everybody healthy and he's got options. So he can actually look at the players and say, you know what? That performance wasn't good enough. I got somebody else that can do the job instead. And that mm. changes a lot of things. You can see a different type of confidence with Arsenal now that they've kind of feel like, all right, we got our, we got our stuff together a little bit. With, with, with Tottenham, it's the opposite. They have scored four goals and given up 10 in their four games uh, since the international break. Haven't won any of those. They got lucky, though. I guess they got penalties. Uh, against Wolves to go through. I will say that the shine, the silver lining for them is that Harry Kane finally scored this season and it was a very well taken goal. And that is not a good sign for Arsenal fans heading into the North London Derby. You still wanted him to be frustrated. Now, with regard to my quick betting tips, I'll say the Gunners haven't lost a home league match to Spurs since 2010. Now, I probably just jinx them. And considering the, the contrast of the two forms that I just mentioned, I think that that's going to continue. I like Arsenal to win plus 130. And then scoring anytime, I think Saka plus 380 
is fantastic. He's only scored once this season, and it was in the League Cup against West Brom, a 6-0 thrashing, so I don't even know if that really counts. This kid is due, and I think he's going to step up in the North London Derby. So I, I, I like Arsenal to win this one. Close. And I like Saka to, to be involved in the score sheet as well. I like yeah. it. Ben, final thoughts. Go ahead. Yeah, just interesting what Jimmy said. I mean, the one thing I'd, I'd leave you guys with is, um, you know, Saka and Smith Rowe, this is a big game for them. Smith Rowe was good early on. Saka, I think, still probably hung over from the Euros a little bit. They do need to start making those direct contributions, whether it's assists or goals. It was good for Smith Rowe that he scored uh, in midweek. As for Harry Kane, look, Harry Kane could lose a leg midway through the North London derby. He's still going to score a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, did he lose the leg because because of the penalty? So that like the, he got tackled so bad that he, he lost. He, an Arsenal no. defender would never tackle that. Yeah, <laughs> no, he lost the he lost the leg in the transfer window. Uh, is what it is what it seemed like because he one 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 was out of the door when it slammed shut and it is it is gone. But I will say that this is uh, same thing for for Spurs in this match. A real test for them to really. Figure out how you work with Kane and Son. I think he's be- Son was, has been better without Kane on the field. I think Kane's been a distraction. I think this is a huge thing for Kane to come back from because he st- sort of stated his will to leave. And this is an opportunity to show up for your fans and sort of win them back. And then also from a counterattacking standpoint for for Spurs to really show that, okay, if you're going to be a counterattacking team, let's see you do it uh, for long periods where you don't have possession against the team that that might uh, make you work for it a little bit and then show that you can transition and get those results and not just be a team that's bunkering in deeper and deeper and and how that system with Santo is any different than Mourinho's. Yeah, well, one thing is for sure, uh, uh, three nothing straight back-to-back losses for Tottenham. Arsenal, despite some wins, they remain in 13th place. So both teams need some wins. I just want your score predictions. Don't add anything to it. I'm going to say your name and you give me your score prediction, okay? Are you ready? Especially the Arsenal supporters. Are you ready? Here we go. James Bench. Four all. <laughs> Heath Pierce. Uh, uh, um, one nil Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Conrad. I'll say 2-1 Arsenal. There you go. All right. Let's stay in the Premier League, by the way, and let's go to Old Trafford. Another early kickoff on Saturday. This is Manchester United against Aston Villa. Mike Dean is refereeing, so I'm sure Manchester United will get a penalty in this mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. I will say nothing more after that. Mm-hmm. Keith Pierce, let's begin with you. Manchester United, Aston Villa. How do you see this one? Uh, obviously, United lost in the Carabao Cup to West Ham. They had a B team, essentially, but still, a loss is a loss. And when you look at the Premier League table, they still need to keep track with Chelsea, Liverpool, and, of course, Brighton in fourth uh, right underneath them. How do you see this game? Yeah, I think the the odds sh- shift considerably if Leon Bailey is out. I believe he took a knock, uh, and and he will be out. I and, think, yeah. and and uh, that that changes things because of just the spark that he's he's brought to the team. I think Manchester United are continuing to figure out how to not win so uh, difficultly. Uh, I think Cavani has to play a bigger role this season if they're going to try to win uh, difficultly uh, or difficult. I don't even know if that's a word, guys. But uh, yeah, we're on the same page in, in a more in a more in a more difficult way. It's the West Coast. It's it's early here. <laughs> um, but but they rested De Gea, Ronaldo, Pogba, Maguire, Luke Shaw, and Fred uh, for the Carabao Cup, which they went out in. Um, and so I expect them to come back with the full strength uh, lineup here. And again, continue to try to figure out how to win more simply or how to take that fight and effort, which I think has been admirable uh, this year and, and figure out how that can lead to better things and not having to, to, to scrap for those points, because I think that's not sustainable. I mean, I respect Heath for, for putting it delicately. They, man, you know, it'd have been rubbish. Despite their wins, they're they're a team that are really kind of unpleasant to watch considering the, the array of talent. They're entirely reliant on, on individual genius or score the most goals in the Premier League so far, James Bench. Yeah, but yeah. one yeah, four. Respect on their name. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it. They aren't. They are nowhere near the sum of their parts yet. I suppose the the only advantage they have is Villa are still working out their their system, and you know, you can win games, a lot of games, when you just have a galaxy of individual talent. But like, they're hard to watch. I don't really want to talk about them. <laughs> I, by, by the way, I will say, though, that there's something to say about Man United at least having a fighting spirit to them that I haven't seen before. So individually uh, on the attacking side, they at least look united and 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 excited to uh, at least fight for a little bit more than, than, than they did in the yeah. past. So I think there's something to build on from that. And I think you can win games from that. It's just the rest of that of like getting on the same page. You're not going to, you know, Ronaldo can't be the fastest player on the field at his age every single game. What I would jump in and say is with regard to the Carabao Cup, if you're going to lose in that competition, you want to lose as early as possible so that you're not wasting and committing energy and then losing in the semifinal or final. Like, 
God, why do we even waste our time in this competition that nobody cares about until they actually win it? Now, yeah, I think like, why yeah, that's when we made it to the final <laughs> and just avoided relegation. Yeah, 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 we don't. Exactly, exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, and I say this because if I look at Man United's schedule over the next month, two months, it is pretty wild. They got home to Aston Villa, as we're talking about, home to Villarreal in the Champions League, home to Everton. Then they have the international break. And the international break obviously adds its own level of drama due to can players leave? Can they not? What's the whole problem there? You got to go through that whole hamster wheel of, of, of emotion through that. And then when they get back, it's away to Leicester, home to Atalanta, home to Liverpool, away to Tottenham, away to Atalanta, home to Man City. Yeah, so, it's a lot. so for them to throw in some League Cup games just so they can get some of their B squatters some minutes. And I actually thought that it's a big opportunity for Jaden Sancho in particular. To, to really kind of put his stamp on why he should be in the starting lineup. I don't know if he did enough with it against West Ham in the League Cup, but uh, obviously you can see he can be dangerous. It is something to, to take into consideration. I will say very quickly about my bets. Last week I hit uh, Cristiano Ronaldo to score, United to win both teams to score, and I'm doing that one again. It's plus 290. Very Caesar good, Sportsbook. Jimmy. You don't mention Tottenham Chelsea anymore, which is good. You just mentioned the good one. <laughs> you, yeah. you were better than the other one. You, I, I, you I, had I, an over win. You did. You did. Oh, overall, it was pretty good last week. Yeah, what, I'll say, what I'll say is that, uh, and, and this is a shot at James Bench, the, the two home games in the Premier League for United, they've scored nine goals. And, and even if it's individual brilliance, I think they'll have enough to get past the Villa team. That does historically struggle at Old Trafford. So I'm going to throw it out there. I know there's some injuries. Uh, Leon Bailey with, with Aston Villa. Buendia hasn't really hit his, his peak yet. So I like Ronaldo and, and uh, United to do the business. Yeah, James, back off my seventh favorite <laughs> Premier League team. They're my seventh favorite team. Give them some respect. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but listen, uh, just in, in terms of this one, um, you know, the, the key thing, and I'll just defend Bench for a second here because. <laughs> oh, that's 2v2 now. Let's go. All right, let's no, go. No, <laughs> the, the main reason why I'm saying is because they also, by the way, the thing about Manchester United is that with the moment they lose that ball, the midfield is just open for business. And if Villa can somehow figure it out, if John McGinn. Can, if he's 100% and he can help, he's, he might be going through concussion pro protocols still as well. Morgan Sanson was injured yesterday, so it's going to be tricky. But if they can exploit that midfield, maybe something can happen. That's all I'll say. But again, I will remind you, everybody, Mike Dean is refereeing this one. <laughs> exactly. There's a, penalty, there's a penalty for Manchester United in this game, I'm telling you right now. All right, quick score predictions very quickly on this one. I'm not even going to say it. James Bench. Oh, 3-1 Man United. Oh, God's sake. Jack. I'm going 3-0. I'm going 3-0 nil. Nil Man United. Sorry. Oh, my God. Gonna, gonna, gonna I'll, say, I'll say 3-1 Man United. Sorry. Do I, I hate you all. <laughs> all right, fine. These are the remaining fixtures. The right, We mentioned Chelsea, Man City, Manchester United, Aston Villa. Those are the early kickoffs on Saturday. Everton against Norwich. Norwich needs something bad. And Rafa Benitez as well, I guess. Leeds, West Ham, Leicester, Burnley, Watford, Newcastle, Brentford, Liverpool should be a sexy one. And on Sunday, Southampton, Wolves, Arsenal, Tottenham, of course, and Palace host hot, hot Brighton and Hope <laughs> Albion. Absolutely fantastic. That's your Premier League fixtures for the weekend. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will go around the rest of Europe, including La Liga and Serie A. Stay right here. Que golazo. Weekend preview. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. We are back. Weekend preview. Que golazo. Jimmy Conrad, Heath Pierce, James Bench. Let's go to Spain. Let's talk about Barcelona. As we are taping, everybody, Barcelona have yet to face Cadiz. So even if you're listening on the following day and Barcelona lose, I don't even know if Coleman will be around, but we'll see. But they do need some wins. That is for sure. By the way, Ronald Koeman midweek just did a press statement ahead of his presser against Cadiz. Didn't even answer any questions. He read some stuff. We need your support, et cetera, et cetera. He left and that was it. The relationship between John Laporta, the president of Barcelona, and Koeman is not good. And uh, I was talking to our friend Fabrizio Romano today and they do have a plan, but they want a plan to have a, a manager that comes in for the full future. They don't just want to get rid of Kuman, interim manager, and then do it all over again. So Kuman is walking on thin ice, is what I'm trying to say. Jimmy Conrad, let's begin with you, because Barcelona now facing Levante, a very tricky, a very tricky matchup for Barcelona. No, 100%. I just really want to understand where Barcelona fans are coming from, because I don't feel like they're living in reality. I mean, they, they lost the greatest player to ever wear their jersey, there's going to be some fallout. They're clearly in some financial strife or, or struggling with that. 
And then they've got injuries. Usman Dembele's out. Sergio Aguero's out. Pedri is now out. Jordi Alba, Braithwaite, Ansu Fati. I don't know what the hell people expect. Yes, obviously, you want to bring in better players than Luke de Jong, who had a header recently, that, and that's why he's here, and he couldn't even score that one. So I just I just don't understand. You know, I feel like the frustration is overall. Sure, you can bring in a Xavi or Eric Ten Hag from Ajax or who, whoever you think could fill. Luis Enrique, Roberto maybe Martinez coming back. Seems yeah, to be Roberto Martinez. Yeah, he's the, he's the, the leading favorite for the bookies. I... I don't think that's solving any problems. I really don't. And he's rolling out players now, Kuman. Like, play the young kids. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're still unbeaten in their last five games. So, yeah, you can be pissed that it doesn't look the same as before. It was never going to look the same as before once Messi left. And I don't know how this At game's going to play At least the other managers, uh, Jimmy, won't put PK up front, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll say is if, if I'm going to put uh, – if I'm going to make a suggestion, I would go with Xavi. I would bring somebody in that 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 lives and breathes and, and dies with with Barcelona. He is Barcelona through and through. And I just think if you're going to start a project from the very bottom, why not him? I, I will say, by the way, that Javi, uh, who I what what team is he he managing right now? Um, I will. All he long. Outside. Outside. Right. Oh. And they had uh, 12 players on the Qatari team. And they were they literally played the Gold Cup like they were Barcelona. The yeah, way that yeah. they they he did not change a thing in the way he rolls them out. They roll they play the exact same as the national team. Most of them then play uh, at the same club. Obviously playing for the Qatari national team. The uh, manager, so, by the way, a former Barcelona coach. Yeah, mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. of Qatar. Yeah, yeah. And so there there was this. You know, you can see that he hasn't he hasn't gone somewhere else and been like. I think I'm going to change the way that I, the game should be played. So I, I'm I'm not against that, but I will say I'm I'm with I'm with Jimmy on just the overall. Um, unrealistic expectations. I think it's th- there's this tension. But people are forgetting just the drama that Messi created. And blame Messi, blame the club, blame uh, economics, blame whatever. That's a huge thing to come back from. It's in the end of an era. And I think it's naive for them to not have had a, a plan knowing that eventually, no matter what, Messi will, uh, Messi will leave and to not have a plan in place seemingly, whether it's now or in six months or in a year, I think uh, was a lot of drama. Obviously, he said in another interview that, you know, Messi kind of covered up a lot of the problems that they have because he could do things himself. But they Mm -hmm. do have young players and they do have some excitement. And if you're a young player in the team right now, I don't think that's a huge motivator to have this kind of guy come on, not even do a press conference, throw you under the bus. And of course, these players have to deal with that kind of stress. But it's not a, a, a great look. I think it's important for the fans to understand where they're at and not think you aren't the same Barcelona as before. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. these financial disasters that that are taking place the, 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 on the verge of bankruptcy is a serious, serious problem. Uh, not just now, but for the future, right? You can go and put a Band-Aid over it. But how are you building that for the future? I think it's an important statement. How he said it maybe isn't the best way because it seemed like it was more of a shot at the club and a shot at the fans of saying like, are you guys stupid? But uh, I do think that there is some, it's very Dutch yeah, to do that. By yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had, we had the, we had the picture of him on the screen. Like, would you like uh, uh Coleman looking at you in the way that he was, if you're watching this uh, in a video format, like it doesn't look, uh, it, I mean, it's terrifying. Uh, so, well, yeah, you make I, a good point, right? It's not Kuman's fault that they're 1.5 billion in debt, but also, you know, I, I'm an, another manager wouldn't come in and put like PK up front and making it super Dutch. I mean, Ben, ch- 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 chime in here. I, I don't know. What. I mean, Barcelona are a mess, I think. You know, that, that's for damn sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I don't know why Xavi, who's turned the job down before, would necessarily want it now. And I think that's what you have to find, whoever this manager is, because Ronald Koeman has gone about this in a very Ronald Koeman way. You know, he does not lack for self-belief. And he, he, would, he would say, give me the squad and I will make this team into Champions League winners. That might not be true. But that's how he, you know, that's the job he signed up for. And he, it's pretty clear he does not want to manage the Barcelona of the future now. You need to find someone who does. You need to find someone that, that is going to, is willing to go to Bayern Munich and say, actually, I don't want to play 5 3 2 and not mm. lose heavily because it's good for my reputation. I'd like to, you know, build every game, game in, game out. I want to play the Barcelona way and I want to play it with the kids. That's not Kuman. It, basically his energy is please sack me. You have to pay me a lot of money to sack me and I can go manage somewhere else. I've said it before. I genuinely am starting to come around to the idea that you should give the job to Arsene Wenger because he would enjoy it. Well, but, and he might forget about the two year thing at world cup as well. So yeah, that, please, yeah. get him yeah. off that idea, but anyone that just wants to do that specific job of rebuilding Barcelona, 
for the long term. That's who you need to find. And I don't know if Laporta would have the patience. Tanger's not a bad idea, actually. Tanger's a pretty good idea. Uh, Jimmy, very quick. Uh, yeah, anybody. But yeah, very quick betting tips, Jimmy Conrad. What do you see? Because Levante are tricky, as we mentioned earlier. Yeah, they are tricky. I, I would just go with the draw, to be honest. I feel like that's your best value. Levante is known for stealing points off of the top teams. And I think that's that's the way to go. It's plus 450. Um, and, and I'm kind of here for that. Now, minus 286 for Barcelona. They are at home. But uh, I just feel like there's a vulnerability in this Barcelona team, especially with all this crap going on off the field and Kuman saying all these things that that could put off the team a little bit. And without Pedri and without some of the names I mentioned who are hurt, I think Levante can come in and steal some points. So I like the draw plus 450. Yeah, I like that. And being at home for Barcelona means nothing uh, at this moment in time. All right, let's uh, continue here in La Liga. Real Madrid are hot, baby. Carlo Ancelotti, uh, Karim Benzema. Finally, we'll get that Pichichi, maybe, just scoring goals for fun. Uh, Jimmy's wearing the Real Madrid shirt. We'll get to him in a second. But let's begin with Heath Pierce. Real Madrid against Villarreal. Kind of interesting one. Have Ancelotti, has Ancelotti uh, finally got the, that mojo back for Real Madrid, Heath Beers? I think so. There's a, there's a there's a, a a youth to this squad that's that's leading the way. And again, we I talked about this last week on on the weekend recap that this is a, a a shop window for for bringing in your next your best players, right? This is very different than Barcelona, who are talking about the finances and the problems and the next generation of things. Like they got rid of Ronaldo a couple of years ago and continued to just move forward in a different way. Obviously, Benzema is in the best form that he's ever been. He's consistently in great form, and I think that gets overlooked. Um, but the, the young players, I think, are are the wave of the future uh, for these guys, and I think they feel empowered and they look empowered. And anytime Real Madrid has these these young players paying off, or, or whether it's Real Madrid or Barcelona, have young players paying off in the first team, uh, it, it, it sort of motivates the players around them. Some of the more experienced come to life, and they don't feel like they have to uh, sort of carry the, the the load of the team. So uh, to get a couple signings right that are big swings, uh, I think is is, is changed things, and and they're definitely in in a form that that I don't I don't see them really having a lot of trouble with Villarreal. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with Heath in this one. I think Carlo Ancelotti is a bit of a player whisperer. He's always been a player manager. I think players love playing for him. Asensio just scored a hat trick the first time a hat trick's been scored for Madrid in the league since 2017. Alvaro Morata got that one. I think Vinicius is playing out of his mind. He's got five yeah. goals and two assists so excellent, far. Excellent, uh, Cam- Vinicius. Yeah, Camavinga obviously coming in and and bringing him along slowly, but still making him feel a part of it, right? He's obviously come on and, and makes a difference when he comes on as a super sub. Uh, same thing with Rodrigo, right? Making sure they, they feel comfortable and what and knowing what they need to do when they get out on the field. Uh, they've scored 21 goals so far in six La Liga games to start the season. That is tremendous. And the biggest player is Kareem Benzema. The guy has been tremendous. He is involved in 15 of those 21 goals so far, eight Ooh. goals and seven assists. That is the best start in goal like involvement with goals and assists combined of any player after the first six league games of the campaign in the last 21 years. So what you're saying, Jimmy, is when Messi left, Karim Benzema had a huge party, went to Vegas. <laughs> and he videotaped it. And Val Buena is the one that has the video. It's a really <laughs> crazy story. Uh, but what I'm going to say is that I agree with Heath ultimately. I, I like Real Madrid to win this game. They have given up eight goals, though, in six games. So they do have a tendency. They still maybe have to figure out that part of it if they really want to solidify their stance as one of the favorites to win La Liga, which they are, and potentially the Champions League. So I like Real Mad- Madrid and both teams. To sc- Real Madrid to win both teams to score, plus 200 is my bet for this one. I mean, I think the one thing I would say about Villarreal is they, I mean, they were slow out of the blocks this season, but the last few games, they've looked really good mm-hmm. in an attacking sense and some, some great options at striker, not just Alcacer and um, Gerard Moreno. Interestingly, Dan Juma, who they picked up from the championship, mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. really come good of late. Yep. So th- they have options. They were the best team against Atalanta. They're a good team. And I mean, Jimmy's saying there that, that Madrid have, have conceded quite a few goals. I'm with him that, I mean, they will score. But they will, I think they will probably concede as well. And um, Villarreal starting to starting to look like their season's finally up and running. But but no Gerard Moreno, no Chukwesi. Like they're still missing a few guys. They, they started Paco Alcacer last game, and I thought that made a big difference in their win uh, over Elche. But but yeah, ultimately I agree with you, Bench. That uh, even though they have some talented players there, Madrid, I just. They've got a little bit more momentum, I'd say. Yeah, it might be a little players. tougher for. I mean, defensively, Villarreal are not bad in the league. They've only conceded yeah, three, yeah. and uh, Real Madrid have conceded eight. But I do agree with everybody here, uh, specifically that Real Madrid will take this one. Quick score predictions, very quick. Heath Pierce. 
I'm going to go with 3-1. You put uh, Rodrigo, Camavinga, and Vinicius Jr. in and around the goal, and they're they're creating chances every time, and, and they're dangerous. So 3-1 to, to Real Madrid. I like that one. James Bench? 2-1. Same two sort one. of stuff, but one less goal. There you go. Jimmy? Yeah, I'll agree with Bench. 2-1. All right. Okay. Well, is there anything else in La Liga that you boys want to talk about? Because obviously, Atletico Madrid, we looked at them and saw, my goodness, they are looking good. And then suddenly, the performances have not been amazing. They're two points behind Real Madrid. Sevilla, by the way, they continue to be up there. They have a game in hand as we tape this. Anything from La Liga that anybody wanted to mention, Jimmy? Yeah, I'll pop in and just say Atletico Madrid are masters at scoring after the 90th minute. I want to see at what minute they score. 95th minute, maybe, uh, against Alaves this weekend. And I want to give a shout-out to Falcao. That guy is absolutely doing it. Ryan Vallecano's in fifth in La Liga since Stop he showed up. They haven't lost. They haven't lost. Plus, Here's really, one for you, everybody. I really like their David Bowie jerseys, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thing. yeah. It's, it's kind of like, like the Peru jersey, but, you know, you took a few uh, a, a, a few pills and you just went nuts. Crazy. <laughs> hey, uh, my only thing about uh, La Liga is that I was I was on location for a shoot yesterday and the American hype soccer machine didn't tell me anything but Matthew Hoppe getting an assist against Real Madrid. And oh. I, so I thought that they had beat them only to find out that they had actually been completely battered uh, by Real Madrid. <laughs> so I appreciate uh, the, the American soccer hype machine continuing to uh, just overlook a lot of things uh, for the hype of our players. I like it. Benj, anything from La Liga that you wanted to take? No. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you this, though. Falcao doing amazing, Rayo Vallecano, and then Javier yeah, Rodriguez right. on his way um, already to uh, Saudi Arabia. So, you know, that's a telling story for two Colombian stars in, in which way they're going. By the way, Falcao, considerably older. Well, not considerably, but a lot older than Javier Rodriguez, and he's still doing it. El Tigre continues to shine. All right, let's finish up here, boys, with Serie which you can watch exclusively on Paramount Plus and CBS Sports. We got a sexy game on Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern on Paramount Plus. Calcio e Cappuccino. And by the way, check out Wednesday's part from this week where Jimmy, Matteo Bonetti, and Marco Messina give you the lowdown on Serie A. But Lazio against Roma. So many intriguing storylines here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, correct. Des Norris. Hamer Rodriguez went to Qatar. He didn't go to Saudi Arabia. My fault. But let's talk about Lazio Roma, by the way. Jose Mourinho, Maurizio Sarri. We know the sort of contentious relationship they had uh, back when uh, Sarri and Mourinho were both in the Premier League. So now we return to the capital in Italy, Lazio Roma. This is a big one. Jimmy Conrad, let's begin with you. Yeah, I guess for me as a Roma supporter, I have some choice words for Pedro, who decided to leave Roma to go to Lazio, which just feels unacceptable on so many different levels. I talked about it in the pod uh, with, with Marco and Matteo. This is a good one. I, I really like this game in a lot of different ways. We talked about chess match. I know some people roll their eyes. When we call uh, you know 90 minutes of the beautiful game a chess match, but I just think you have two managers, Emerizio Sarri and Jose Mourinho, that know how to play chess uh, in this particular instance. I think that that Roma and Mourinho are in a bit of a different form and maybe playing a little bit better than Lazio. I think Lazio has been found out in the last week or two that they have some vulnerabilities, that they're not as strong in all areas of the field that they might pretend to be. But that front four for them, when you think about Immobile, Felipe Anderson's been very good, Milinkovic Savic, uh, Luis Alberto obviously coming in as well, a little bit deeper from midfield, is very good. It's just that back line that I think Tammy Abraham Mkhitaryan, Veritu, Pellegrini uh, have been very good going forward. And I think we're in that part of the year. I just want to throw this out there where Jose Mourinho teams usually start off pretty hot. I still want to go back to Spurs and all the angst around Mourinho at Spurs. He did put an ass kicking on, on Man United at Old Trafford last year, early in the season, 6-1. Yeah. He somehow gets his teams to score early. The issue with Mourinho is once they stop scoring and Tammy Abraham and every striker goes through this, can't score, the whole team's having struggling scoring. He gets super pragmatic and then takes all the fun out of it. They're not there yet, Roma. And I feel like that's going to give them the edge. Whereas Sorry, I think, is still trying to get his implementation of Sorry Ball still inside his team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Heath. Yeah, I don't. I don't have much more to say than this one, to be honest with you. Um, not really any takes that are going to add to to the length. Well, of give me your score prediction, Heath Pierce. I mean, uh, if just you know, this is a good one. Tommy Abraham would be talking big on him. Uh, what, what do you see? It's a contentious derby. Yeah, I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with one nil for Roma. There you go, one nil for Roma. James Bench. 
Well, I think this is, you know, going back to what Jimmy was saying, I think this is the moment that Jose Mourinho, without really needing to, just goes, yeah, I'm shutting up shop now. Remember all that? Attacking <laughs> that was We're not doing that anymore, though. And he's going to drill these players to within an inch of their life because they kind of got a bit unlucky and, and lost in the space of 10 minutes to Verona. So I think this that was great. It was really nice seeing Mourinho play good football. But that's <laughs> he's going to like shut up shop and win 1-0. <laughs> there well, you go, 1-0. Jimmy, quick score prediction. Yeah, really quick. The last, I mean, they, they share the same stadium. So it's weird that the home team actually gets an advantage here because Roma won the last one when they were at home 2-0. Lazio last season won at 3-0. I like the draw here. I actually think that it's going to be a 1-1, potentially a 2-2, given how well these teams are, don't play defense. So I'll say... Uh, the draw one one or two two plus two forty five is the odds on that. I like it. And by the way, just a quick uh, Inter Milan are still doing their thing with uh, four wins, one draw, zero losses right now. Thirteen points ahead. Milan after that. Napoli, Atalanta, Roma, Fiorentina. By the way, watch out for them. So Lazio need a few more points, I guess, as they are in eighth place. All right. As we wrap up, obviously we can preview. We can't hit every single match but there are some really good games all over the world so i'm going to ask the boys to just pick one game that we haven't discussed that we should be looking out for from anywhere around the globe let's begin with heath pierce uh i'm gonna go with the the uh, chivas club america uh chivas, fi chivas, chivas fired their coach uh before this rivalry uh they played they, they played without a number nine and that could change now with the with uh this uh, Leano, Le Leano, I think is his name, uh, coming in as as a uh, as a, as an interim, um, and yeah, America are obviously the favorites. They're top, of, they're top of the table, and then uh, and then on the other side, Memo Ochoa has been fantastic. So this is one of those ones where uh, you, you definitely want to tune into this game. Uh, it's always it's always electric, but yeah, and and then doesn't lack the draw, uh, letting go of their 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 coach just before. And again, I t I think that's courage, letting go of your coach just before. A big it's, rivalry to see. Well, you know what, what it happens. is? It's very Mexican. It's, yeah. it's, what it is. it's very. Uh, James Bench, you have a game that we haven't mentioned that we should be paying attention to. I do indeed. And you can watch it on Paramount Plus. That's a bit branding for you there. Well, there played. you go. Um, Celtic, remarkably slow starters in the Scottish Premiership so far this season. I think they're down in sixth. Oh, wow. Mostly that's because their away record has been horrible. Um, and actually, Ange Postacoglu side is scoring a lot of goals, not conceding many. They're just getting quite unlucky on their travels. But, you know, when a team is expected to be competing for titles year in, year out, and expected to only lose three or four games a season, every time they lose a game is a crisis and every wobble is a crisis. So Celtic at home to uh, Dundee United on Sunday. They're actually playing before uh, one more game uh, after we take this as well. Scottish game, Scottish League Cup game against Race Rovers. So these are trying times at Celtic and that's always an interesting time to uh, to catch up with some Scottish football. And that is a quarterfinal game, the one against Wraith Rovers. So absolutely look out for that game against Dundee United on Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Jimmy Conrad, what's the game that we should be looking at that we haven't talked about yet? Okay, okay. I got two. I'll make them really quick. The first one is I'm on Jesse Marsh watch. RB Leipzig is hosting Hertha Berlin. Hertha Berlin have won two straight. Jesse Marsh and RB Leipzig. A little vulnerable right now. I don't know how much more of a leash they're going to give him if he continues to drop points. So that makes me nervous. And then from an MLS perspective, we have the New York Derby. We talked about the North London Derby. Another the Derby one. in Rome. We have another one, the New York City Derby as NYCFC and then New York Red Bulls play again. They just played last night and it was a 1-1 draw kind of controversial in my humble opinion penalty given to the red bulls uh it in the, in the dying embers of the game to make it 1-1 in that but uh for them to have another crack at each other so back-to-back -back derbies in the league three days later yes i'm here for that it should be a very very good game i like it i like it uh i'll just give you psg montpellier because you know mm. I want to see PSG lose and lose and lose. And uh, <laughs> let's watch Goliath go down. Uh, Jonathan Johnson, I'm here for it if you're going to come. By the way, Ian Paul Joy calls the games um, as well for NYCFC. Commentates there as well, so check it out for that. Darby, that's it. That's our weekend preview. Fantastic. Keith Pierce, Jimmy Conrad, and James Bench. Thank you so much, boys, for being part of this fantastic preview. Make sure that you follow all of them on Twitter and social as well. All, you can read James Benj's content on CBS Sports as well. And by the way, USMNT content coming up from Heath Pierce and Jimmy Conrad as well. Jimmy, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Heath Pierce, thank you, brother. Thanks for having me. James Bench, hope your voice gets better. Let's hope so. <laughs> for everybody's sake. We will see you next time. Enjoy all the matches this weekend. See you next time.